<laughs> hi, hi. It's been a while since the last video again about Recore, and we're now up to revision A2. And even though this revision has some bugs, I've assembled a few boards and sent them off to beta testers. So it's going to be nice to see those boards in the hands of someone else. So a quick status update on this current revision. I want to say that all the parts of the board are working functionally. And what I mean by that is that they may work, but I've not tested the performance of each part. So for instance, the input stage does its job logically, but I've not done a stress test to see how it performs under heavy load. Well, actually, that input stage has been the first thing that I've gotten a closer look at. I have ambitions of getting this board to handle up to 30 amps of current. Anything above that should trigger an overcurrent condition. The input stage is one of the more complex parts of the board. It can measure voltage, current and temperature and has a programmable current limit. It also has reverse polarity protection in case you get those wires mixed up during assembly. There's an issue though, and you might be able to tell just by looking at the board. There's a huge bank of aluminum polymer capacitors for the stepper drivers. These have a very low ESR of 34 milliohms each which is probably overkill, so I'll exchange those for something a bit lighter. They're behind a MOSFET in a separate power domain from the main CPU. But what happens when that domain is turned on is a big inrush current, up to 100 amps. Obviously, that triggers the current limit, so I've spent some time playing around with different capacitor values for lowering the slope of the inrush current. With the right values, I've lowered the peak so the overcurrent does not trigger just by the presence of those capacitors. If there is a short somewhere in that high power domain, the overcurrent will still trigger and the notification can be sent to the user. I've also had a look at the heat dissipation during high current draw on the heated bed output. An experiment with a constant current source of 20 amps shows the board topping out at about 130 degrees Celsius. That's pretty high. But I noticed that the heat map shows that the hottest part is the bed MOSFET, which has a gate voltage of 3.3 volts and thus not operating completely in saturation. As a test, I hotwired the bed output to run off of 12 volts instead. That made the part cooler. So now the hottest part of the board is close to where the thermistor is. Following that, I could calibrate the onboard thermistor with what I saw in the thermal cam. With forced cooling, I'm unable to observe the board directly, but knowing the offset between the thermal camera and the onboard thermistor, I was able to get a measurement that I can trust to within uh, a few degrees. The results show a temperature of 93 degrees C after 10 minutes with no forced cooling and about 62 degrees with a constant fan blowing on the board. The hottest part is about 15 degrees above that. Keep in mind that 20 amps is about double that of a normal bed, and it shouldn't take more than about five minutes to warm up a bed anyway. So with these changes, I'm ready for a new prototype run, and hopefully the next revision is good enough for early adopter testing. That'd be amazing. Bye.